Hebrews 11. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith of Elias? How he make intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Amen. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes. That, that they should not see. The ears that they should not hear unto this day. I want to I want to share something here. What it says, because a lot of people th say that they think that uh, that they don't have eyes to see or, or they don't have ears to hear because uh, and they blame it on the devil. Well, you got to get out of that mindset that. Everything's the devil's fault because it's not. The devil doesn't get have any more control other than which what you give him. The devil is a defeated foe. He is defeated. The devil has no power. Let me say it again. The devil has no power other than what you give him. So the only what he's saying here is that. This, this spirit of slumber, it says God gave them that, that. God gave them the spirit of slumber that they should not see. Why? Because they're not, they weren't ready. They weren't ready to see what God, God had for them. That's why. They weren't ready to hear what God had for them. They hadn't come into a place of godly sorrow. They haven't come into, they haven't repented. These people were not, that was the last thing on their minds. And David said, let their table be made a snare. <laughs> he said a snare. In a trap. See, we, we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, We don't want to pray. We don't want to pray these prayers uh, that that things would become a snare and a trap to people because that's not showing them grace. Even though just because David prayed these prayers doesn't mean we 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 need to pray them as well. That's not the case. When you see something in the Bible that doesn't show love, then you need to consider consider it. And see what 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 is the uh, what is the um, the meaning of what he's trying to say? Where where are they at? You know, the Bible says that you can take things out of context. But we don't want to take things out of context. At the same time, we want to make sure that that we're that we're walking in love. And a lot of these prayers were always to to, to um, for you know to become stumbling blocks and snares and traps. Well, let's go ahead and just keep reading. And David said, "Let their table be made a snare." 
and a tr and a stumbling block and rake your pants unto them. So, so that that could be a prayer that would that would ultimately lead them back to the Lord, or that would lead them to repentance. That's a that's different. It's totally different. If you're praying that, if you're praying for somebody that um, God would you know put a snare or a trap or a stumbling block before them. So that they could come to the knowledge of God, that's that's good. That's a good thing, um, because because uh, God God will always make a way. There's a, the Bible says that there there are always God will always make a way. He's always, you know, sometimes he can't get through. He can't get through to the person um, by by grace and mercy. Grace and mercy just might not work with certain people. It doesn't work. Sometimes people need to ha need a, a a hard rebuke. Some people need to be snared and trapped so they can hear from God. Um, verse verse ten: Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their their back all way. I say then: Have they stumbled that they should fall? See, he says that's not why he's saying that. He's not saying. Oh, I want them to stumble so that they should fall. That's not why he's saying that. He says, God forbid. Romans 11, 11. But rather through their fall, come on, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. So he's praying that they would fall so that God can lift them up. For to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you, uh, Romans 11 verse 13, for I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, <clears throat> I magnify my office. And by my means, I may provoke to emulation. <laughs> that word emulation is a uh, jealousy, rivalry. And them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be reconcile be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Verse sixteen. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. Let's read that again. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the roots be holy, so are the branches. So it starts from the top and it trickles its way down. If the root is not holy, and the uh, you know if the root is not holy, if the pastor is not holy, walking in holiness, if the the, the prophet is not walking in holiness, if the apostles, or whoever it is that's teaching you, is not walking in holiness, eventually, it's not what's taught. Again, let me say it's not what's taught. It's what's caught. It's not what's taught. It's what's caught. You know, you know, when your grandma, my grandma used to say to me, she said, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Therefore, who are you hanging out with? What kind of Christians are you hanging out with? Are you hanging out with compromising Christians? Are you hanging out with, comp with Christians that are smoking weed? Are you hanging out with Christians that are drinking beer? Are you hanging out with Christians who are smoking cigarettes? Are you hanging out with Christians that are watching uh, movies with fornication and adultery and pride and lust and envy and violence? Or are you hanging out with Christians that are watching movies that are glorifying to God? And holy and, 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 and a sweet smelling aroma to God. Verse 
Verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. So what it's saying is, <laughs> so because we've been grafted in, uh, Gentiles have been grafted in, therefore we get to partake of the fatness of the olive tree, of the blessings of God. We get to partake in the blessings that were that, that was meant for the Jews. The, if, if, if you're a Christian and you're serving God with a pure conscience and you're walking in holiness and you're consecrated and, you, and your flesh is con and your spirit is con your flat your spirit is over overpowering your flesh and you're walking in holiness and righteousness before God then you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna reap the blessings of God you're gonna you're all, they're gonna be all yours and anything you want will be yours as long as it's gonna glorify God because that's that's how God is he wants obedience he 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 desires obedience he commands obedience why does he command obedience because he knows that obedience is what it takes to defeat the enemy. Jesus has already defeated him. It's our turn. It's our turn to fight a good warfare, to keep our eyes fixed on the finisher, author of our faith, to stay on the narrow road. No matter what's going on around us, we praise him in the storm. Why? Because he guarantees us blessings. He guarantees us favor. He guarantees us his, the anointing of God. He guarantees us to power, love, and a sound mind. He guarantees us peace. Peace is a person. His name is Jesus Christ. Verse 18. Boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee boast boasting means to rejoice rejoice are you rejoicing are you rejoicing in your sin are you rejoicing in your sin that's going to take you to hell? Or are you rejoicing in the things of God? Are you rejoicing in holiness and righteousness and purity? Are you thanking Him? The Bible says we enter His gates with praise and we enter His courts with thanksgiving. In our hearts. Verse 19. Thou wilt, thou wilt say then. The branches were broken off. That I might be grafted in. Verse 20. Well. Because of unbelief. They were broken off. So why were they broken off? Because of unbelief. Unbelief in what? In themselves? No. In their money? No. In their job? No. In their wife? No. In their husband? No. In their pastor? No. In their church? No. Because of unbelief to God, they were broken off. Their unbelief is their faithfulness. Their faithfulness to God. They, they were unfaithful. They were disobedient. They are unbelieving. When the going got tough, they got going. And they didn't stick it out. They didn't, they didn't stand their ground. They didn't praise God. 
They didn't go to church. They didn't lift their hands to the Lord. They didn't stay accountable. And they were broken off. Verse 21. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spared not thee. So this is saying that if you want to walk in unbelief, don't expect nothing from God. If you want to walk in unbelief, don't expect nothing from God. God is gracious. God is merciful. And he'll continue to seek after you. He'll continue to knock. He'll continue to knock. He'll continue to knock on the door of your heart. But if you don't answer the door... And you continue to walk in your unbelief. He's going to go and find someone that's going to answer the door and let him in. God will not kick down the door to make you serve and obey him. That's not how God gets down. God will not make you do nothing that you don't want to do. And that's grace. That's his grace. And he will always, the Bible said, his goodness is what draws men to him. So if, if you, if you're struggling, if you're having a hard time, if you're doing, if, if you're not getting breakthrough, if you're this and you're that, it's because you're walking in unbelief. The Bible says, if we have faith of a mustard seed, we can move mountains. How much time are you spending in prayer in the morning? Or are you say, oh, thank you, God, for another day, and then just going to work? Oh, thank you, God, for another day. Oh, th or, oh thank you for my meal, Lord. Bless my meal. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. But you're not blessing God. You want to be blessed then bless God. Bless Him. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for truth. Have faith. Put your trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. And let Him direct and guide your path. It's, being a Christian at the beginning is not easy. But it gets easier. It gets easier as you go because you start getting rooted and grounded in the word of God. You're, 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 you're allowing others to, to sow into you and to water you and to, to nourish you. You're taking correction. You're not getting offended. You're forgiving people. You're praying for people. God honors that. Behold, verse 22, Romans 11, verse 22. Behold, therefore, here it is, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. So his goodness and his severity. Severity is decisiveness. Rigor, rigor, severity. And toward thee, goodness, if, 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 if. It says, but toward thee, goodness, it doesn't say, it gives a condition. It says, if, I, F, if. You meet the condition and continue to remain in him and have faith. Otherwise, thou shalt be cut off. 
which means that you will become frustrated. You'll, you won't have peace. You won't have joy. You won't have favor. You'll be miserable. And that's the severity of God. And they say also, verse 23, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. So basically what he's saying is, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to play titter totter with God, and you want to, you want to serve Him, and then and then go go into the world, and serve Him, and then go into the world, and then serve Him, and then go into the world, and then serve Him, and then go into the world, and then serve Him, and then go into the world, and then serve Him, and go into the world, and then serve Him. He'll still let you back, but, 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 but. Do I even need to say but? There is no but. There should be no serve him and go back into the world. You should stick, stay in him, remain in him, bear fruit, go from glory to glory, be used of God, fight the good fight of faith, stay on the narrow road, stay the course, Get through the trials and the tribulations. They're going to come. Stay faithful. And you, will, and you will make it to the end. All you're doing is if you're backsliding and going back and forth, back and forth. It doesn't mean that you're not a child of God. But what it means is that you're immature. It means that you're immature. And you don't have... You don't have... Uh, you don't have root. You don't have roots. So of course you're going to fall. You don't have accountability. You're not. You're not being accountable to nobody. You're. You know. There's a lot of things that come behind that. Verse twenty-four. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more <clears throat> shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. Israel became blind, and they still are blind. Israel has a veil over their eyes that has not been unveiled because of their unbelief. Israel wants a savior that's going to come and redeem them and save them. But he already came. He already came and went. And they're still crucifying him to this day. Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written there shall come out of Sion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto, unto them, when I shall take away their sins. See, the difference between Jew, the Jews is, and us is they think they have, they think that they can work for their, their, their salvation. They think that, that by doing their Hail Marys, or not Hail Marys, but doing their, uh, their, their, their bowing on the wall and, 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 uh, obeying the law. Nobody can obey the law. Nobody can, nobody can obey the law. That's why Jesus came. We, you can't, you cannot go one day without obeying the law. You're, I bet you're going to slip. You're going to fall. You're going to fall short of the glory of God. You're going to slip up. You might go one day or two days, but that's because you're you're probably in a room somewhere 
and you're and you got Bibles all around you and you ain't got nothing to do. But as soon as you go out into the world, that's when you're tested. That's why the Bible says to the producing of your faith, the testing of your faith produces patience. We can't work for our salvation. We could do. We could work. To, we could work to keep it. We could work to keep it, but we can't work to. We, we can't. It's, it was a free gift. We have to work hard. Don't get me wrong. We have to. We have to work hard at keeping our salvation. But it's not by works that man shall boast. We we don't boast. We don't boast in ourselves because that's. If 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 grace was if grace was uh was works, then we would be boasting in ourselves because we're the ones that that did it. And we're not the ones that did it. God Jesus is the one that did it. So that's why we have we have to boast in him. It's by 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 his it's the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, to believe in something means to if you believe, if you believe in a red light, if you believe in a red light when you're going down the street, are you going to go through the red light and you see a, a semi truck coming? Or are you going to stop? You're going to stop. Why? Because you know that if you run through the red light, you're going to it's you're going to get killed. That's that's what grace is. Grace grace says. There's a semi truck coming. Stop. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So, we have to, we have to repent. We have to, we have to repent. We have to believe. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and He was, He was, He died on the cross and He raised from the dead and He's alive, and you confess that, that's the beginning. And then you're supposed to go and bear fruit. If you're serving God, if you say you're a Christian, if you say you're a Christian. And you're smoking a cigarette, or you're or you're listening to like Led Zeppelin, or you're listening to like music that's not giving God glory. Then I would I would question the fruit the fruit in your life. The Bible says that we judge them by their fruit. If you're listening to secular music, then then I'm gonna say you don't have. You don't have very much fruit on your tree. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. You can judge me by my fruit. Judge me by my fruit. Please, please judge me by my fruit. The fruit doesn't come in one day. Just because you're on fire for God one day and, and you're doing things for the Lord, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean you have a bunch of fruit on your tree. Because you need to be tested. You need to be tried. And then we'll know that you have fruit because you've been you've been through things. And you, you're still standing firm in your faith. But if you just meet somebody for the first time and they're and they're listening to secular music, then I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think that's gonna stumble me. I'll be like, okay, well, there's not much fruit on that tree because I, I, I'm aware, I'm aware that I have, I have, I understand, I understand what it is to serve God and what God requires of us. God requires holiness. God requires righteousness. God requires us to be holy. He requires that our, our members are, are clean and pure. Their eyes, our eyes are pure. Our hands are pure. 
Our ears, what we're we putting into our ears. Verse 30. For as ye in times past have not believed God and have now obtained mercy through, the, through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. See, God, God's always, even though you don't have faith in God, that he'll still, he'll still seek after you. Even the more, actually. Even the more. The more faith that you don't show in God, the more, the more he's going to go after you. Just like the devil. The more faith you have in, you have in God, the more the devil goes after you. It's the opposite with God. The less faith you have in God, the more he goes after you. Um, not quite the contrary. The Bible says, seek, draw close to God and he'll, he'll draw close to you. So if you want to flip it, if you want to flip it around, then draw close to God and he'll draw close to you. First, uh, uh, Romans eleven thirty three. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. See, we don't know, we don't know God's ways. We we can't, we're not God. And that's the problem with man, is they want to become God because they don't because because they want to be in control of their life. They they want to be in control and they want to say, look what I did, look what I accomplished. And as Christians, we can't be like that. It's like, look what God did in me. Look what God did for me. That's testimony. Testimony is not like, oh, look at me with my new car. Oh, look at me with my new suit. Oh, look at me with my, look at me, me, me. I, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. They want to make it into a song. Me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. And that's demonic. Verse 35, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For in him, for of him, and through him, and to him are all things. Amen. To whom be glory forever. Amen.